And on our special Broadway Tony show here on Dave's Gone By, an old, old friend of my own and also of the program, Charlie Gross. Charlie is the co-host of Two on the Isle, which you can watch on YouTube and also Manhattan Neighborhood Network. He is also an actor and writer. In fact, his one-man show, which is called... That is How I Found an Affordable Apartment on the Upper West Side of Manhattan Without Really Trying. And he performed that at the United Solo Festival back in 2019 and may be bringing it back in the months ahead again. So, Charlie, ordinarily, I'd start talking immediately about the Tony nominees and categories, but let's talk Drama Desk real quick because you went to the Drama Desk Awards this past week. I was. I did. And, and I had a wonderful time. Sutton Forster hosted it and she performed, which was great. And we had Kelly O'Hara, who won a Drama Desk uh, for Days of Wine and Roses. And we had the Laura Bonatti. Uh, among, 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 others. among others. Yeah, yeah. So it, what was your favorite, absolute favorite moment of the whole Drama Desk Awards experience? Ha, yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Ooh. It, you know, it really went well. I, I like that the speeches weren't too long. <laughs> I like the opening number. They put a desk on the stage. Not a very spectacular desk, to be honest. And they managed to incorporate it into most of the uh, musicals and I think some of the plays that uh, we had seen this season. I thought it was a very clever opening number and I, re I really enjoyed that part. Well, opening numbers are important. It's become the signature yeah. thing of the Tony Awards now, ever mm -hmm. since really the Neil Patrick, Harrick, sure. Neil Patrick Harris days of starting mm -hmm. with a really, really funny number and that keys the whole, the whole thing. But let's well, talk, I, yeah, please. I think that's with any award show these days. You really, you do have to have... Uh, a, a good beginning to keep. Well, the Oscars almost became a joke because so, so many of the opening numbers were too loud or too bad or ridiculous. But the Tony said, no, we can make them really good. And now they, and last, they, they certainly did. Yeah. So, Charlie, let's get to the category that I've asked you to cover for this year's Tony Awards. It's best performance by an actress in a featured role in a musical. I'll read them out and then you can extemporize as you wish. Shoshana Bean in Hell's Kitchen. Amber Iman in the Pizka, Nikki M. James in Suffs, Leslie Rodriguez Kritzer in Monty Python's Spamalot, Keisha Lewis in Hell's Kitchen, Lindsay Mendez, Mary Lee We Roll Along, and B.B. Newworth in Cabaret. Charlie, your thoughts on the category? Well, talk about an embarrassment of riches. You really have some serious talent here. I am going to eliminate uh, Amber I'm in, in uh, Lempica or Lempica. I'm not quite sure how uh, they're pronounced. Uh, she was good, but again, this is a very, ta very talented group. I was surprised that Natalie uh, Joy Johnson, who's also in that musical, was not nominated. Hmm. Now, let us go to, um, oh, B.B. Newworth, Cabaret. Now, she is in a very interesting position because this show has been very misdirected. And consequently, the story that we normally see out front, you know, Sally and Cliff and the MC, kind of tanks. Mm. So the story of Newworth's character, and wasn't it just yesterday that she was in Chicago? Yeah. She's right there. <laughs> She plays, you know, an aging landlady, and she is in love with one of her tenants, a Jewish grocer. And this is right of the dawn uh, in Germany in the 1930s. Wasn't a good time to be Jewish back then. Is it ever? But okay, fine, yeah. And on, on any occasion, this is a very sad, very strong story. But here in this production, it takes front and center, and so does B.B. Newworth's performance. So do you think that would be her third Tony? Because she has she has a Tony for Chicago and she'll also mm -hmm. for Sweet Charity in Featured Actress. Do you think this will be number three or not? I don't think so. Uh -huh. Aha. Right. Uh -huh. Why? Well, let, let me tell you about some of our other contenders. You have, oh, Nikki M. James Suffs. Again, this is um, like Amber I'm in good performance, but they were better. But let me go to the lady who I would love to see win the award, but I'm fairly certain she will not. And that is Leslie Rodriguez Pritzer. 
I have to tell you, this production of Monty Python's Spam a Lot was fabulous. I think every bit as good as the original. And in this production, I think even though you had a very strong lead for King Arthur, the supporting actors really were the ones to shine. And none more so than uh, Leslie as the Lady of the Lake. Now, this is a character referred to, but never seen in the movie. But here she has a substantial role. And it's hilarious and it's fabulous. And she should win. But why won't she? Number one, the show closed. And if your show has closed, that is several strikes against you with the Tony Awards. Number two, it's a comic performance going up against all these dramatic performances. And even though that makes her a standout, comedy tends to be overlooked, which is sad. And I would love to see comedy win this year, but I don't think that will happen. So let's get down to the what I, who I consider the strong contenders. This is Lindsay Mendez, Merrily We Roll Along. And the thing is, I liked her performance. I felt, though, that the positioning of her character, Mary, was wrong because it put Mary front and center at the expense of Charlie. And to me, Merrily We Roll Along has always been the relationship between Frank Shepard, the composer, who loses his ideals, and his lyricist, Charlie Pringus, who keeps his. And Mary is, it's like Frank, Charlie, and then there's Mary. This production, it's Frank, Mary, and then there's Charlie. So it's a very different interpretation. It seems to be one that everybody loves, and it's the one that brought Marilee back to Broadway. And for that reason, she's got a good shot. But... We have a brand new show on Broadway, and I never thought a show like this would could be so amazing. This is Hell's Kitchen, a jukebox musical with one of the most amazing stories I have seen in a musical in quite some time. This is a young woman living in Hell's Kitchen in an artist uh, apartment, housing for the arts on 42nd Street, and her coming of age her beginnings as an artist, the people in her life, and how the characters are drawn. And every time you think you know where this story is going, they throw you another curve, and it's fabulous. And the music just fits in so beautifully, even though I don't think most of it is original. And this is actually my choice for best musical, even though I know we're not doing that category. So you have two actresses from this show. Uh, Shoshana Bean as her mother, and Keisha Lewis as her mentor and, and uh, music teacher. Now, Keisha Lewis may have just gotten the boost from the drama desk because she won it last night. She won in this very category last night, but I'm kind of leaning to Shoshana Dean who gave just such an amazing performance. And I'm thinking, you know what? All the acclaim that she had hoped to get for Funny Girl, I think she should be getting for this role. And she did get a Tony nomination for Mr. Saturday Night. She was really good in that, but that was pretty much she, as soon as it as it closed. So all right, now, yeah. So Charlie, you you did also mention that your favorite musical, Broadway musical of the year, was Hell's Kitchen. We just have time for me to ask you what are one or two of your other all favorite of the year shows, whether on or off Broadway. Like, what did you love this year? I really enjoyed the revival off Broadway of I Can Get It For You Wholesale. I said, even if you have to pay retail, see this show, that, that's closed. I was shocked. My, my award for the most egregiously overlooked show this year has to go to Harmony. This was the show that Barry Manilow strove for decades to get on. He finally got it. It deserved a much longer run. And Chip Zion giving the performance of his lifetime. And it's pretty impressive given his track record on stage as, as an actor was not nominated for best, uh, for best Actor in a Musical. I was very surprised about that. And I'm gonna give you one more that you may be very surprised to hear. Back to the Future. Oh, I yeah, thought- I love that one, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I was not happy with the score, although you have numbers, you know, like uh, Johnny B. Good and Power of Love mixed in, so. And there are some nice numbers, but I love the staging, I love the book. And I, and I liked, uh, and it's a great story. 
Mm, well, yeah. Even if at the end when the car flies, it doesn't fly anywhere nearly as well as Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And not <laughs> and it's not like the chandelier in Phantom coming at the <laughs> audience or, or something like that. But but cool. Now, Charlie, Charlie, again, please tell us where we can watch you and our mutual friend Leslie Hoban Blake doing two on the aisle. Well, the best, probably the place for most people would be on YouTube. You can just type in Charles Gross, Two on the Isle, or Leslie Hope and Blake, if you prefer, and you will see our latest show. Please subscribe. We're trying to reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Right. You can also see us on Manhattan Neighborhood Network, where we are one of the longest running shows on, on that network. And David, of course, you uh, <laughs> joined us many times in the studio for that. We in Manhattan, we're on uh, every other Thursday, 10 o'clock. Uh, check your cable system for the details. But you can also, if you don't live in Manhattan, and I'm told that there are quite a few people who don't, you could do www.mmn, Mary Mary Nancy, dot org. And you can no, see Mary, it. Mary Nancy Nancy. M -A -N oh, Nancy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mary Nancy Nancy, yes. Uh, Mary Jane is also a show you should see, but speaking of Mary's, MaryNancyNancy.org, and you can see us there, and you can see all the other wonderful shows that are broadcast on the four channels that Manhattan Neighborhood Network has in Manhattan. The, the very fact that public access exists is, is a wonderful thing that you can see people like Leslie and Charlie doing for theater what Cisco and Ebert used to do. <laughs> For, for film. It's a, I think it's a wonderful thing. And you guys, please, Charlie, keep that going. How long is it? Almost oh, 30 years now? How long is it? It's, it's I think it's a little over 30 years. Uh, you know, yeah. Jeff, Jeff Goodman and I, and Cicely and Ebert was actually, were actually our inspiration. And Jeff Goodman and I, uh, he was my original co-host. We used to meet in the theater. We were both print journalists at the time. And we discussed the, uh, the shows that we had seen. And I said, you know, we should do what Cicely and Ebert are doing. And then finally, you know, we talked about it for several years. And then finally, you know what, Jeff, we're going to do this. And we originally, we shot our first two episodes in Staten Island, of all place. I was directing a uh, television program there at the time. Then we moved it to Englewood, New Jersey for a year. And then finally, Eminem opened its first studio in Manhattan. And we have been there ever since. Yay. Yay. And Charlie has been with Dave's Gone By for many, many years, for many, many Tony shows. And we would love to get him on sometimes on our Saturday mornings, but <laughs> eh, little Shabbos. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I do wish you a most happy Shavuot, Charlie Gross. Thank you. That's actually, so that's, uh, when, when is this airing? Well, this is a Saturday morning. That's why Okay, so it, it, it'll be over, but even so, it, it's actually starting in, in another hour over here. Well, love to your family, love to you, Charlie, and thank you for being in the neighborhood on our Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure.